Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. We have a really exciting review for you guys today. Today we're looking at the ASUS PG278Q monitor that you see sitting here in front of us. This is also, uh, you'll probably hear it called the ASUS ROG Swift display, Republic of Gamers line. Um, this is an exciting uh, monitor for a couple of reasons. One, it is a 2560 by 1440 27-inch panel that you can see here that has refresh rate capabilities of up to 144 hertz. So, uh, you know, we've seen some other 24 by f uh, 25 by 14 monitors that are overclockable to that refresh rate, but this is one that is being released by ASUS. It will guarantee to work at 144 hertz. That's pretty exciting. The other big feature, of course, is that this is the kind of the, I will call it the first retail release of NVIDIA G-Sync technology. So this monitor integrates support for G-Sync as well as some other features that we'll talk about throughout the review. Uh, we'll talk about the, the specifications. You know, the most important ones I just rattled off were already. It's a 2560 by 1440, 27-inch uh, panel. It is a TN panel. It's an LED backlit panel. Uh, it's TN, so a lot, again, people are gonna start to wonder or complain about what the uh, actual viewing angles and quality of the panel are. And again, I continue to be impressed of the, uh, by the progression of TN panels. Viewing angles were very good, uh, left to right and even up a little bit. Uh, we got to inverted colors fairly quickly if you're looking at it from the bottom. But my guess is not, a many, not many people are going to be laying their head on their desk trying to look up at a display, so I don't think you have to worry much about that. Uh, we did some color testing on this. We ran our, you know, Spider Elite through its uh, color calibration, and it was actually out of the box, very, very close to sRGB standards already. The reds were very deep reds. The blue is very deep blue, all kind of indicative of very good color reproduction on the panel. So it's a very good high quality panel as well. It has one millisecond gray to gray response times, which is obviously necessary when you're talking about a 144 hertz uh, refresh rate. The design and style of the monitor is actually, I, I like it quite a bit as well. So, um, it has uh, a kind of, it's difficult to see, but if you look at it on the back, it has very sleek lines. It has a lot of uh, ventilation for cooling that ASUS is bragging about. Uh, the base stand is, it's, it's not wobbly at all. This is not like some of those, uh, like the Samsung monitors we looked at a few months ago that were very shaky when you touched it. This doesn't have that property. Uh, you, have, you have this nice red light around the bottom that they call light in motion. It's just kind of a neat little added effect. It has full support for height adjustment. It has support for um, tilt and angle, right? You can angle it up that way and a little bit down, but not too much down. And it also has the ability to rotate into a portrait mode as well. Um, connectivity, you're a little bit limited on this monitor. This monitor only has a DisplayPort 1.2 connection on it. There's no DVI port, VGA, anything like that, HDMI, none of that. Display port only. And I think that was decision was made basically because it is a G-Sync monitor. They don't want people connecting HDMI or DVI and, and wondering why G-Sync isn't working or doesn't, you know, it wasn't impressing them. Uh, you have your power connection, of course. It has an external power brick. So I know some people are not big fans of that, but it does have that. The only other connection on the back is it has a USB 3 hub in there. So you can hook a USB 3 connection from the monitor to your PC, and then you have two local USB uh, 3.0 ports on the back of the monitor. Uh, you've got pretty basic cable management. You know, it's, 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 it's clean looking there. Uh, it does have a Visa mount support. So if you want to mount this uh, to your own arm, or you want to have multiples of these connected up, you can absolutely do that if for some reason you don't like the stand. The only other uh, big kind of feature that I like in terms of the design is if you look at this, the sides of this monitor, the bezel is only six millimeters wide on the edges. It's a little bit bigger on the bottom and on the top, uh, but not, it's not as important for, say, if you wanted to buy three of these and put them in NVIDIA surround, right? So you can actually run G-Sync in NVIDIA surround with three monitors. You have to have three graphics cards because you have to have three display port connections, but you can do it. And uh, because of the ultra thin bezel on the side, I think you'll have probably the best available surround or Ifinity experience uh, that you'll be able to find in any kind of modern monitor. Now, uh, this also has some software features. It has G-Sync support. It does support 3D Vision 2, right? If there are still people out there that are utilizing that. And it also implements support for ULMB, ultra low motion blur technology. Uh, I'll, I'll mention that real quick before we dive into G-Sync. ULMB uh, is a feature that kind of was introduced as light boost with the original 3D Vision. And it was kind of 
meant to minimize ghosting in uh, alternating frames because uh, the frames were going to be a little bit different on each, uh, on, for each eye. And since those were coming very quickly one after another, you need to minimize ghosting. Essentially, the backlight is strobing in time with the refresh rate of the monitor. Right? And, it, and it turns it off very quickly so that there's no residual images on the screen. And uh, originally with 3D Vision, some people figured out how to hack that and make it work in 2D mode. And then it was kind of unofficially supported in 2D mode. Now it's kind of a, it's an official feature. You go into the on-screen display on the ASUS monitor, uh, and as long as you're running at 85, 100, or 120 hertz on uh, the panel, you'll be able to enable ultra-low motion blur. You cannot enable ULMB with G-Sync, though, so it's important to keep that in mind. You'll have to judge the benefits of ULMB versus the benefits of G-Sync, depending on the game and the frame rate that you're running at. Uh, you know, RTS games that have a lot of a very small text on the screen as you scroll by, um, but are running at high frame rates where maybe G-Sync is less of a benefit. I think the benefit of ULMB will be, uh, you know, more visible there, right? And, and we, we have some demos that we've shown, uh, like a UFO demo or scrolling text demo or scrolling bar demos that shows the benefits and detriments of ULMB. If you enable ULMB, for example, you have much lower brightness overall from the panel. Uh, the last thing I'll say about the monitor is that the controls on the back are actually really easily accessible. Uh, I like the joystick input method on the monitor. Uh, my favorite button on the side is actually a, a turbo button is what they call it, but it allows you to switch between 60, 120, and 144 hertz refresh rates with a single push of the button. And it actually was really helpful for us to demonstrate the benefits of higher refresh rate screens. Open up a game like Bioshock Infinite and kind of strafe back and forth. And you'll see uh, with V-Sync off, without G-Sync working either, you'll see a lot of tearing uh, as you go through, uh, you look at vertical lines. You switch it to 120 hertz, and that tearing is significantly reduced, and 144 hertz, it's reduced a little bit more. And you can actually do that without having to go back into the driver and change things that way. It's a pretty cool little feature. Now, the most important feature of this monitor is clearly its implementation of G-Sync. Uh, it is the first retail available monitor that has NVIDIA G-Sync technology in it. I do not count the ASUS VG248QE monitor. That was the one that was kind of kind of released uh, with the original demonstration back in October. Uh, that monitor was you know, sold through uh, resellers like uh, system builders and stuff. It wasn't really a retail availability in Newegg or Amazon. And they sold some upgrade kits, but all of that was very low quantity. So uh, the number of people that had got to see it and use it was, was not high enough, right? This is actually going to be a widely available monitor, Newegg, Amazon, all those places. So this counts in my mind as the first retail available G-Sync monitor. Now, if you don't know what G-Sync technology is, it is essentially a replacement for vertical sync, being on or off. Um, but rather than go into a whole bunch of detail here in this video, I would highly encourage you, if you don't know what it is, you don't understand what G-Sync and how it affects gaming, uh, you watch our interview with Tom Peterson from NVIDIA uh, that we did here in our studio uh, when G-Sync was first launched. It has all the detail there about how it differs, how it works, how it improves the gaming experience. And I really think that video is worth watching for a better kind of all-encompassing explanation. The uh, one quirk that Alan saw with the original G-Sync monitor with Metro Last Light in frame rates between 25 and 30 uh, was actually gone with this implementation. So if nothing else, we know that NVIDIA has improved and tweaked G-Sync in the last several months as we have you know, seen, waited for these monitors to be released. So that's actually a good sign. The experience of gaming on a G-Sync monitor is way better than anything else that we have here, right? So I was able to, you know, in the last several days, I sat down and I played Bioshock Infinite, played Skyrim, played Watch Dogs, uh, played Metro Last Light, we played Wolfenstein The New Order, a ton of games, and they all work flawlessly with G-Sync, and they all play much better with it. Um, it. It really is kind of, once you see it, it's very hard to go back and play on other monitors. And the ASUS VG278Q brings that to you for the first time, and it's bringing it to you at a 2560 by 1440 resolution. Um, 
I would say uh, the G-Sync experience is great. You know, it's easy to implement in the, in, the, in the driver, right? You basically go in the control panel and instead of turning V-Sync on or off, you enable the G-Sync feature and you're kind of off and running. Um, you can run it at 60 or 120 or 144 hertz. It will operate in any of those modes on the monitor. Uh, although for demonstration purposes, it's kind of interesting to switch between those with that turbo button on the display and see how it affects animation smoothness as well. Um, just as, as a kind of a caveat, I, people that have been using 120 and 144 hertz monitors for a while, you know, you, you are already seeing some of the benefits that this monitor provides, even with G-Sync technology. G-Sync is much more of a uh, world-changing feature for a monitor in those lower frame rates, say 40 to 60 or 40 to 70. Once you get above that, um, you know, horizontal tearing is lessened, especially if you have 144 hertz refresh, where any kind of tearing is on the screen for an exceptionally low amount of time, so it's less distracting for you as you're playing the game. But still, G-Sync eliminates it completely. So if, um, you know, if you're coming from a 60 hertz 1080p panel, or even a 60 hertz 25 by 14 panel, a standard monitor, you're going to get the benefits of 144 hertz refresh, refresh rates. You're going to get the benefits of a, uh, you know, G-Sync implementation on the monitor, uh, and I think that's going to be something that is, is definitely worth investing in in the long term. There are still downsides, though. It's an expensive monitor. I don't think there's any way to get around it. If it's $650 or $700, that's a markup over other 2560 by 1440 panels on the market, definitely. You also have to have a GeForce GTX graphics card. If you have an AMD Radeon GPU, this monitor will function as a normal 144 hertz display, which is good. Um, that you won't be able to take advantage of G-Sync, obviously. You have to have a GTX 750 Ti or better to actually utilize G-Sync. Um, there are other monitors coming out on the market for G-Sync as well in the next couple of months. There's gonna be a 4K 60 hertz panel that will support G-Sync and there will be a 1080p uh, lower cost panel that will be released also with G-Sync support. So this is just happens to be the first one. I, you know, after, after having used it for several days, I think this monitor is great. And if I had to choose between uh, the, v, the, the, the PG278Q 25 by 14 with G-Sync, 144 hertz, or the other Asus 4K monitor that we've seen on the market that's also $649, that's 4K in uh, 28 inch, 27 to 28 inch format there um, at the same price, I would probably go with this, especially if you are already a, a GeForce user, right? If you're already invested in that kind of uh, NVIDIA GeForce, GeForce experience ecosystem, um, this, is a, this, is, this is a good panel. Uh, and it, uh, 2D work, it was great. Just using it in the Windows desktop at 144 hertz, just mousing around and, and using applications, it feels very different. It feels much, much smoother than even a steady 60 does. And uh, if you can game at with uh, you can game with the G-Sync capability, I, I think once you do that, you will never want to go back to a standard monitor. So there's there's a lot of stuff happening here between now and the end of the year when it comes to display technologies. This is really just the first entry, so that may scare some of you off, make you want to hold off on doing any purchases. But uh, I, I think it would be you'd be hard pressed to feel disappointed after buying uh, the ROG Swift. So we have a uh, full review up at PCPro.com where I have more details on what my experience was with a bunch of these different games uh, and how they worked at 60 or 120 or 144 hertz with or without G-Sync. Uh, I'd encourage you guys to go check that out. We've got a link in the video description for sure. Uh, and as I said, it'll be available uh, as of I record when I record this. They tell me it will be shipping on August 26th. So uh, get your checkbooks ready, I guess, if you want it to. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks.